we're in an AI revolution. It's an amazing technology, but it's not a silver bullet. Its chance to succeed is directly proportional to the quality, quantity, and types of data you generate to train AI models with. And AppSci understands that. My name is Jonathan Eads. My role is VP of Informatics. AppSci's vision is to deliver novel, optimized biotherapeutic proteins to patients at unprecedented speeds. The application of novel deep learning AI technology combined with synthetic biology has the potential to unlock the full benefits of biotherapeutic proteins. You're looking at the product of hundreds of millions of years of evolution producing an amazing immune system. And the strategy of leveraging that makes a lot of sense. I'm Steve Quill. I'm the group lead of strength construction here at AppSci. What drew me to this company was the fact that they were willing to take the first step in really marrying synthetic biology and deep learning AI. When I think of the fusion of these two fields, they could not be more different. I think they definitely speak a different language. By having Benchling be the intermediary, it's really alleviated a lot of handoff communication errors. Coordination across teams is, it's not a nice to have, it's a success or failure kind of situation for us. Prior to Benchling, we were predominantly in Excel spreadsheets, which was woefully insufficient to address the problem space that we're in. It is very difficult to control uh, data accuracy, consistent metadata. We need a system that can connect those data types at scale. And that's not a spreadsheet or a collection of spreadsheets. The type of deviations we were seeing before benchling adoption would be things like identifier mix-ups. You know, someone gets an identifier of a plasmid or a strain wrong, and downstream, we don't, we end up discovering it, and that ends up really costly. I think one of the most striking changes that I saw was that people looked at the data differently. It wasn't just generation of a data point so that you could put it on a report. It was data as a valuable asset in itself. You're able to iterate upon designs much faster with more integrity. To succeed with our drug creation platform, we require a data platform that can support it. Benchling is an integral part of that platform today. In the next five to 10 years or so, we're going to see a full array of biotherapeutic proteins that were not available before. I think that's really step one on the path to personalized medicine.